Hey there, St. Paul Lutheran family and whoever else happens to be watching. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In our reading for today's devotion, you will be introduced to what are called the Psalms of Lament. These are psalms which express sadness, grief, pain, loneliness, and even anger toward God over sin and its effects in this world. Some of them are so forward and direct with God that you might be surprised to find these words in the Bible. Can you really speak to God like that? Well, you can. And to prove it, I encourage you to pause the video and to read out loud Psalm 13. Our word of the day for today is sorrow. From verse 3 of Psalm 13, How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? An important Christian emotion is sadness. We should feel sadness over the sin in our lives, the sin that we commit and the sin that is committed against us and others. For example, in 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about a godly sorrow which produces repentance. This is when we realize our own sin. It should produce sadness in us that we have wronged God and wronged other people. Uh, so that we take that sin to God and we repent and turn away from it and receive his forgiveness. But we should also feel sorrow when we are affected by sin, when somebody sins against us or we see how sin has affected others. We can feel sorrow about uh, situations in our world, like the racism and violence that we have seen recently. Or whenever we see someone who is poor, hungry, lonely, homeless, uh, mistreated in any way, that should cause us sorrow and we can express that sadness and sorrow to God. Yes, an important Christian emotion is sadness. And you might think, well, aren't we as Christians supposed to be people of joy? Well, yes, we are. But sadness and joy are not mutually exclusive, as Psalm 13 proves. In this psalm, David himself expresses sorrow over the situation in his life caused by sin. He feels alone, as if God is hiding his face from him and has abandoned him, as if his suffering has no end in sight. How long, O oh Lord? Now, you might think that you shouldn't ever question God, that questioning God is a sign of, of weak faith or, or that you're daring to challenge God. Who would really dare to do such a thing? But really, to question God is at the core of the book of Psalms. And it is not, in fact, a sign of weak faith. Rather, these questions are premised by faith. David, out of his faith, poses these questions to God. You can't question a God in whom you don't believe. You don't cry out to a God that you don't trust can actually do something about it. And in his questioning, David eventually comes to the answer. A God of steadfast love and salvation who deals bountifully with him. Now notice that we don't have any evidence that David's situation had changed at all. No, there was still a lot of sin and sorrow in his life. And yet he found hope and rest and joy in the God who had proved himself to be loving and faithful to him time and time again. Our laments and sorrow find their answer at the cross, where Jesus himself questioned God and lamented, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus is described as a man of sorrows in Isaiah 53. Surely he has carried our griefs and borne our sins. And in his steadfast love, he gave up his life so that we can rejoice in his salvation. So that even in the midst of sin and suffering and sorrow, we can find hope 
and joy through the God who loves us. For our time of reflection on this passage, I want you to consider uh, when have you questioned God in times of sin and suffering? Where are you, God? Why? How long, O Lord? Think about those times, whether it's uh, a sin that somebody has committed against you or, uh, whether, or, or just the, the effects of sin upon you or as you see it in the world today. What has caused you sorrow recently? Take some time to reflect on that and then let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus, carried our griefs and sorrows and knows what it is like to suffer. And so we cry out to you for help and healing and strength as we deal with sorrow in our own lives. Help us to trust in your goodness always and rejoice in your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Our song of the day is Psalm 13, another psalm that I found that has been put to music, this time by Elisa Turner. And so there is a link below this video that will take you to this version of Psalm 13. I encourage you to click on that link so that you can listen to it and sing along with it if you would like as well. Until next time, God's grace and peace be with you all. Thank <laughs> you.